I love Linux conferences, and this is, um, um, I, I love Linux conferences because I usually get to say whatever I want, and, um, and I will do that today. I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about not what Intel does in open source, and I'm not going to talk about open source either, because, and the reason for this is because I think open source is already won, uh, so kind of talking about open source is like, it is no longer ne needed, you know, from, and, and I know this came up a few times, and I think open source one because everybody realizes that, hey, we want to focus on our own business and let's build all the common stuff and infrastructure and operating systems and do that in open source where it's common, everybody contributes to it. Um, from an Intel perspective, it's simple. You know, we want, um, uh, we want our customers to have the best experience running any software on our hardware, and our customers want to run open source. So that's why we contribute very happily to open source and specifically to Linux. Okay, so um, today um, um, I'm going to talk about um, uh, I'm going to talk about new projects and new ideas that we're starting to work on, or we're barely, you know, or projects just that are barely started. So, and, and this is more on uh, uh, taking um, uh, an end-to-end -end view on edge computing and cloud-to-edge computing, and, and where we do feel that open source is is is, is the primary. Uh, 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 software that, that will drive uh, this revolution. So, so um, data, um, uh, you know, when you hear about the billions and billions of devices, uh, those billions of devices, uh, the one thing that is common is that they will generate massive amount of data. So uh, when you think of a, uh, of a factory or a, or a self-driving self car is a perfect example. Self-driving car generates four terabytes a day. This is just massive amount of data. And, and that's great, but, um, uh, but as you know that uh, this data um, gets created, um, uh, it gets transmitted, it needs to get stored, uh, it needs to get processed, it needs to get acted on. And, and this is where, you know, uh, just you know, taking this massive amount of data back and forth to the cloud isn't really, really practical. So, so this is where um, edge computing uh, or computing on the edge and computing, doing a lot of computing on the device becomes really, really very important. And that requires, with, the, uh, with what everybody expects that yes, there's going to be 50 billion devices, smart devices that are connected, not just dumb uh, toasters. Um, you know, uh, 200 billion connected sensors generating all this data, you know, there is certain amount of processing and certain amount of uh, um, on-device uh, actions that need to be taken that drives different types of software that we in open source, we need to figure out how to start working on. So when you look at all of these things, whether it's uh, autonomous drones or cars or uh, any of those type of things, um, you can think of, a car is a, a self-driving car is a perfect example. A self-driving car will have some hundred computers inside of that. And it effectively is a, a data center of its own. It's a just driving data center or a flying data center and so on. And, and the type of software that you do need in order to fulfill that, 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 that promise, that, that promises to radically also change the economy. So I'll give you just one simple example in, uh, uh, in cars. If, if somebody can figure out the software update in cars, uh, several automakers did an actual estimate of like how much would it save us collectively if we figure out how to do over-the-air software update for cars, for software in cars. The number that came back was $35 billion. So there is tremendous, there is like fundamental change in the economy and fundamental change in, in how people live their lives and, and the entire uh, uh, concept of what, what safety is and so on. And, and these things require truly, you know, uh, different types of software that we, that we need to think about. So, Few things that, um, that we are looking at, you know, and, and some of these may be the same as existing technologies, and some of them are just like completely new. Containers, you know, same. Uh, you look at uh, uh, orchestration, well, kind of. 
uh, functional safety, uh, we don't know really what to do. We should talk about this. So, uh, so let me talk about a few of these. Uh, with containers, uh, it was, you know, containers are great. Uh, they're very, very fast. You can whip up a container, you know, run the app, tear it down really super quickly. That works great. Virtualization is also great. The nice thing about virtualization is, is they're very, very secure and secured by a combination of hardware and software. And the reason that, that this works this way is because in containers, you know, uh, you have many, many containers running on effectively one kernel. So if that kernel is compromised, you, the entire batch of containers is compromised. With virtualization, that's not the case. So we started a project, Intel Clear Containers, where you no longer have to pick between the security of virtual machines and, uh, and, the, speed of, uh, and the speed of containers, where we marry all of the, these two together, where we do enable that. And this is some of the work that you probably have started seeing in integrated in Dockers, in Kubernetes, and so on. And we will continue that work, but this is something that I do encourage you to start participating in. Uh, another great technology that we started, and this is, this is going back to the, <coughs> the car example. So um, the car example that the car is, is, moving, is a moving data center. So um, that needs to be orchestrated. And you need to have a similar software-defined infrastructure. But you need to have that software-defined infrastructure without a PhD in, in cloud software and without, uh, uh, without a dozen system administrators to run it. This needs to be very, very fast, very secure, and, and, and very low overhead in terms of setup and teardown and so on. And, and this is what, um, uh, this is what we, what we are starting with, the, with Chow, which is a, a very lightweight orchestrator sp specifically built with, 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 uh, uh, with lightweight usages like a moving data center, like edge computing, as uh, in mind to, uh, to be able to support that. Um, and another item that we're barely thinking about, and quite frankly, we don't even know if it's possible. The, f the, the idea of, uh, if you look at critical systems today, whether in, in, um, in cars or in, uh, uh, whether in, uh, on airplanes or, or any kind of critical system, there is the safety critical OS, the functionally safe operating system, functionally safe low level software. And, and typically this kind of software is built like from the ground up with that specifically, specific safety properties in mind. So, and it's very, very small, uh, very, very small. And in some cases, these operating systems run on microcontrollers is nothing by, by a hand-inspected do loop. So, um, with the way we're proposing to have a full-featured operating system that is able to run on a car or, or, or a hypervisor, or a hypervisor that would run underneath a car that is defined a software, an entire software-defined cockpit, uh, these things need a functionally safe operating system that is full featured. So the idea, so we've, a, a bunch of our engineers have been uh, uh, working on the idea of can we make Linux a functionally safe operating system? We, uh, colloquially, we call this uh, safety critical Linux. We actually think it's possible, but it's going to take a lot of work to, to create a, function, a safety critical Linux or a functionally safe Linux and a functional safe uh, hypervisor. Some of it is going to be completely new and some of it is really creating something, you know, uh, evolving some of the existing operating systems into doing uh, those type of functions. Um, time sensitive networking. Again, this is something that we've been working with uh, organization like Avnu. And it's really simple. In real time OSs, you know, uh, you expect real-time response on the same, same machine. But what happens when you're on the network? When you are expecting some kind of, a re or at least predictable uh, uh, response from, uh, uh, from, from, from an interaction uh, with the cloud. So um, all of these type of projects, uh, and, and there is, by the way, like 20 other more. I can talk for the next hour about all sorts of projects that, we, that you, sh you should start seeing from us, and we want you know, everybody to start participating in. But fundamentally, the same idea, looking at the end-to-end, cloud-to-edge with all the networking and everything inside, and, and that is really what we want to focus on, and those type of new things that we want to focus on. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much for your good listening, and uh, 
um, we'll, we'll see you around the, the conference. Thanks.